Hello guys, welcome to Online Web Tutor presented by Profotech Solutions team. I am Sanjay. We are learning Laravel Admin Panel Development Beginner Tutorial and this is our part 3. Inside this video session guys, we will discuss about how can we configure database connections as well as we will create some of the migrations files and migrate to our database. And also guys, if you are a beginner to this channel, then please don't forget to subscribe. Keep watching our previous video sessions to get the clear concept about Laravel Admin Panel Development Tutorial. So basically guys, in our previous video session mentioned part number 2, we have discussed about the flow of application. So let's review once more. So if I go to next slide, this is the application flow. By the help of this flow guys, we are going to make our migrations file. So what basically migrations files are? Migrations files in Laravel basically those files which is used to create tables, update tables. So only they are actually create our tables to our database where we will define our structure and schema for our database tables. So first of all, before creating any migrations, we have to configure our database connection to our Laravel application. So first of all, just back to browser, here is our database phpMyAdmin. Clicking on databases, now I am going to create a separate database for this entire Laravel admin panel application. So let's say that, Lara admin panel. This is our database name. So if I copy this name and click on create button. So successfully we have created our database but right now there is no table inside this database. We will create all the tables by the help of migration file. So back to editor. This is the project guys actually I have imported inside NetBeans editor. So first of all we have to configure our database connection. So for that I am going to open called .env file not .env.example. We have to open called .env file. Inside this file as we can find there are some database connection strings where it is. And here are we have some parameters where we have to change according to our database connections. So first of all we have to change our host. So basically we are at localhost so this is fine for now. If suppose you are using any IP for your website you have to provide that IP address here. Now next we have to provide the database name. So basically the database name is something called lara underscore admin underscore panel and what will be the username? Username is root and password is root. I am going to save this file. So successfully we have set our connection string for this env file. And also we have one more file where actually we can set our database connection string but that file actually is not too much important for entire application but we have to change that. So where it is just we have to go inside config folder. Inside config folder we have a file called database.php. Now inside this file scroll down and here we have to provide our connection string for our MySQL database. If suppose you are using called PostgreSQL, SQL Server, anything about the database you can provide the according to their database connection strings. Okay, so here I have to provide the IP address. So this is localhost. So this is fine for now. What will be the database name? So it should be something called Lara Admin Panel and username. So this is something called root and password it's something called root okay so successfully we have configured database connections inside two files first we have to set inside .env file in the second we have to set inside database.php after connecting with the database guys actually we need to create our database tables so if you go to slide the first part that we have done for this topic that is configure database connection. Now we have to create the migration files. So if you go to next slide, this is the application flow by the help of this flow we are going to develop our schema and architecture for database. So what we have in the flow, we have faculty type, faculties, classes, sorry class section, class and students. So if I write the schema of the tables right here, so let's say that. First of all, the table should be let's say faculty for this faculty type. So it should be faculty type and the table name should be something called TBL as a prefix. TBL faculty type. It basically contains or auto increment ID that is primary key. Let's say the type. Type should be called teaching, non-teaching and management head and many more options actually admin will provide. Next, we have called a status. That is something this actually faculty type is active or not. And finally we have called created at and basically we have updated at. 
So these are the columns we need to provide inside faculty type table. Next we have faculty. So inside this faculty we have let's say that table name should be TBL faculty. Inside this table we have a primary key let's say ID, faculty name, let's say faculty email, phone number, now it's gender, it's profile photo and address and also we have to relate these two tables with faculty type ID inside faculty. So before name we have to specify something called faculty type ID okay so these are the columns guys actually we need to define inside TBL faculty and also with the status it is active or not something called created at and finally updated at let's add one more column so something called designation so this is the designation of each faculty okay so finally we have made our faculty table next we have called class sections so this is TBL let's say class section okay and also guys all the tables should be we have to provide in plural, plural okay so this is faculty types now this is faculties and finally this is the class sections so we have to inside class sections we have to provide ID let's say that section let's say status and finally let's say created at and updated at so these are the columns we need to provide inside class sections table scroll down next we have to make the architecture for our class table so basically it's that TBL classes inside this classes we have to provide auto increment ID class name here is something called class section ID because suppose we are going to create called class 5 now 5 has what sections so let's say 5a 5b 5c so all these a b c we will create inside class sections only we are going to pass id here okay and finally let's say seats available this is something that what classes has what strength we have to actually provide for the students and finally let's say status created at and finally let's say updated at so this is the table schema for our class section now next we have to make for the student section so let's say that TBL students okay student has ID name email let's say phone number address here is something called profile photo let's say father's name its mother name let's say age and finally let's say status created at and finally updated at so inside this table actually we have to add some more columns something called registration number this is a unique number actually our uh, admin or the management will provide to each student as a registration number finally we have to provide a gender so let's say gender of the student and next also we have to make a column for our roll number so this is roll number of students in each class okay so these are the columns guys actually we are going to develop inside our migrations file and also we want the table as if we suppose create the let's say six number and this is table for the gender okay basically it will contain the gender so let's say TBL gender it will basically contains the value something called male and the female so ID let's say name or let's say type a status created at and finally updated at after creating this gender we have to provide the gender ID right here so let's say gender ID and also inside our faculty section we have to change as let's say that very gender and here it is so gender ID okay and finally we have to make all the management heads something called admin table so this is called admin and table something called TBL admins okay and here also we have to write as 
it should be ID, let's say name, email, let's say password, status, created at, and finally updated at. The question is why we are making TBL admins? We are making suppose we have made an admin panel, but first of all, while login, we need a admin user credential so that we can log into that admin. So those credentials actually we will save inside TBL admins. Okay, so all these structures and schema for all these tables of our database we have developed right here inside this page. Now next, we have to create the migrations file for all these tables, okay? So we have called TBL faculty types, TBL faculties, TBL class sections, TBL classes, TBL students, TBL genders and finally we have called TBL admins and I think that we have to add one more table something called 8 number and this is for class and a student table a student relation because we hadn't developed any table for that okay so here we have to make TVL a student classes okay so let's say ID here we have to provide called class ID next we have to provide called section ID and here it is we have to write called student ID all these tables we have created so far called class sections classes and students so we have related all these things inside a single table called tbl student classes now we are ready to create our migration files so go to terminal i am going to open a new tab i have opened that so if i make some zoom so let's zoom in again zoom in and first of all we have to create our first migration files and this is for our faculty type okay so if I copy this table name or we have a sample command to create our migration in Laravel so how can we check that command so first of all it's a PHP artisan if I press enter this is my system error and now inside this list we can actually find all the command actually Laravel Artisan provides. So inside this command guys here we have multiple options here inside this make section we have called make migration. This is a command which is used to create migration files. Okay so we are going to use this migration command. So if I go to editor now inside the slides we are going to use the migration command something called php artisan called make migration here we have to call migration file name this is migration file name after that we have to provide as a flag so we are going to create the table so for that called create so if I understood about the flag so create is basically used to create schema for tables also we can use called table this is used let's say update schema for tables okay so we are going to create our tables okay so this is and finally equal to sign and here is our table name so we will use the same syntax to create all the migration files for our application so go to terminal scroll down clear all these things and let's say php artisan let's say make migration what will be the migration file name so first of all we are going to create our faculty type so if we go to this slide we have to create faculty types so let's say that create tbl faculty type anything you can provide inside the file name and also let's say create as a flag because we are going to create migrations equal to and finally we have to provide the table name so table name something called tbl faculty types okay so this is our table name if I press enter this is my system error and now as we can see that the migration file is creating and finally created so we have created our first migration file so how can we check that go to editor inside database folder we have a folder called migrations inside this migrations folder Laravel basically provides two migration files by default those files are called create users and create password here we have called third migration file called create tbl faculty type this is our file name and this is our table name 
okay so we will understand about the creating a schema with the migration file in next video session first of all we have to create all the migration files as we have discussed go to terminal we have to create our next migration file and something if I write the same command and something we have called TVL faculties okay so if I just get rid of all these things let's say PHP artisan let's say make migration here we have to create create TBL faculties okay and the create as a flag here we have to provide the table name table name something called TBL faculties if I press enter migration file has been created next we have to create the table for our class sections so just copy this table name I have to replace TBL faculties from TBL class actions and also let's say TBL class sections and also we have to change this is as capital S into lowercase s okay press enter we have created migration file for this TBL class section also let me clear all these things next table we have to create called TBL classes so if I copy that go to terminal type the command and just I have going to replace this create with the TBL classes and here we are going to create called TBL classes I'm going to press enter successfully we are creating our migration file for our classes section and finally we have created that next table we are going to provide called TBL students so if I copy this table name clear all the things type the command and let's say that TBL students and this is finally for TBL students I am pressing enter migration file has been created for TBL students next we have to provide the migration structure for our TBL genders so copy this table name clear all these things type the command let's say that TBL and this is TBL genders and here we have to provide called TBL genders pressing enter migration file is creating and now created next we have to make the table for TBL admins so copy this name go to terminal first of all we have to clear all these things type the command and this is for our TBL admins so just get rid of all these genders and let's admins pressing enter migration has been created for this TBL admins and finally we have to create called TBL students classes so get rid of all these type the command and let's say that TBL student classes and finally let's say TBL student classes pressing enter and migration files created so successfully guys we have created all migration files so if I go to editor inside this editor guys as we can find about the TBL faculty type TBL faculties its TBL class sections classes students genders admins and TBL student classes so all we have created migration files so if I open any of the file this is the structure but right now guys we haven't defined any schema architecture for our migration files because if you are suppose discussing about TBL student classes go to file inside this TBL student classes we have to add these columns ok so we not actually added right now inside this TBL structures we will add those columns in our next video session ok all the structures actually we have discussed we will define in our next video session inside those migration files so if you have any query in this video session guys then please drop your comment I will give my reply as soon as possible so for this video session guys thank you for watching have a great day